Okay, so where we left off, I was using the clone stamp tool, which is right underneath the brush. I'm sampling from current and, and below layers. I'm only at an opacity of 24%, because now I'm just fine tuning some textures. When you do 100%, it can look, this is my own term for it, it can look very copy pasty. So I don't like how that's so clearly matching. So what I'll do is I'll now use the lower clone stamp opacity and target an area. Maybe from further away with some pretty clear scales, like on the foot here. So hold down Option and target it, and then bring that up. and paint it over the top of these scales. So they don't look just so copy and pasted. And I can do that with different targets as well. But because I'm using a soft edge brush, Notice that that can affect the edge as well. And I'm showing that to you intentionally so that when I clean everything up, I can show you the different things to look for. And this is why we do clone stamp on a separate layer. Because as a separate layer, we can always erase away from it if we need to, if it gets overdone. I just don't like that it's so hard for PhotoP to keep up with me here. but you can really see how it helps to transition between surfaces. Okay, so other areas I wanted to work on a little bit, areas that looked too dark, too saturated. Instead of trying to work with the color or even working with dodge and burn, I can just use clone stamp a little bit to knock them down. Like the shadow behind the leg there. or in here, on the inside of the thigh. I can bring some of that leg back into the light because it clearly got kind of blasted out. Or not blasted out, but lost to shadow. On the bottom of the belly here, I can bring in some of that pixel content again, just as a, a low opacity clone stamp. but I might have overdone it there. So remember, that's why we do it all on one layer. So now I can take my soft eraser at a low opacity and kind of erase that shadow back out. So these are all just final touches. So before I was doing a lot of soft erasing to transition, this is the opposite. I can bring those pixels further up. And then I thought that, that this transition was a little weird. So I'm going to take some of these pixels. And you can see how the, the gray or the checkerboard is actually coming from behind it a little bit. So I actually want to clone stamp at 100%. For that part of the back to make sure that I don't have any part of my creature that's still transparent. So, so you gotta be choosy about what I clone stamp from. And then just hit it at 100%. And then I can go back to low opacity to adjust some of the colors and lighting. So I regret not having time to do a tail. I do like all the colors that are in 
in the scales here. That's a lot of fun. And then the scar is annoying to me, so I want to bring some of this other content to cover that highlight. And I can take it from anywhere I want on my creatures. If I want to bring a little bit of blue into it, I can. And if I think I've done too much, then I use my soft edge eraser. Okay. So now if I turn off that clone stamp layer, you see what a difference that makes. It addressed a lot of the issues. I might see some others. And you can do this endlessly, right? We're trying to trying to teach you the tools without getting too obsessive about it. I'm just going to soften the shadow here. But the problem with it is that it also is extending beyond our edges. So if I turn on the white background, you'll see that my edge is no longer super crisp. So how do I get back to that crisp edge? Well, this is a technique we'll be practicing. I go back to my cutout layer from before, and I use my magic wand, and I'm going to turn my feather down to zero because I don't want to soften it anymore. And I just click on the empty space. I'll zoom in so you can see it. Now this is the layer underneath my clone stamp layer. And the selection is independent of the layer. So then I can click on the layer of the clone stamp, right? So this is, this is all my clone stamp masking. And then I can simply delete. And it will give me that nice sharp edge again, cutting out my creature. Voila. Okay, now to turn it in, I'm going to crop around it to save some of these, save some of the memory and the extra pixels. I might leave a little room for a tail <laughs> that I want to add. Maybe I'll animate it growing a tail. That might be fun. Okay, and now I am going to save it first as a PSD, of course for myself, so it's the latest PSD in my downloads. But then I make sure that the backgrounds are turned off, so that the background sketch is turned off, so that the, the background white or gray is turned off, so it's just checkerboard. And then I say file export as a PNG. And that PNG will be like a sticker. I want it at 100% quality. And so when I go to my downloads, and I open this PNG, you'll see that on a Mac in preview, it shows it with a gray background. And it shows it nicely cut out. Oh, I have a little spike there. You know, that's okay. I'll fix that before I do my next assignment. And so that's what we're submitting. And so we go to our canvas page, we go to our post and we edit it, just like so many of you have done. And I require your sketch to meet all the requirements, I require your sketch and your most finished PNG to upload. So I use the little blog interface to upload an image. And I'm going to go from my downloads and do the PNG. Notice that the PSDs are not able to be uploaded. Photoshop documents are not online documents, so you need to also export it as a PNG. And then I'm going to shrink it down so it fits within the window a little bit better. Because these are big files.
And then if I was really finished with it and I posted it to Imgur, it would show up with a black background because that's how that website is designed instead of the white background of Canvas. And we want our creature to work on either a white background or a black background and eventually our fantasy landscape background. Okay, that's it.